Hey everyone, it's Bill here again. Relatively long time no see. I've had a solid few weeks of working on my upcoming book and taking a holiday and stuff like that, but I thought it was high time I got back to making some piano tutorials for you guys. Now, quite a few of you have been in touch recently to ask for help with your cocktail piano playing. Yeah, and that's a request that I'm always happy to go along with because if you follow the channel regularly, you'll know that I really, really love cocktail piano. It's this really kind of lush and easygoing and relaxed style some people think it's kind of cliched and cheesy yeah and I guess it is but I don't care because I really love it and it's also a fantastic style for developing your piano improvisation skills across lots of other genres and that's because as a style cocktail is really kind of free and easy often it doesn't have a regular beat okay you can kind of speed things up and slow things down pretty much as you please and that gives you lots of room to practice things like melodic improvisation yeah like um, chord extension and general keyboard techniques without having to worry too much about sticking to a really regular beat so it's a fantastic kind of sandbox for exploring all of those skills that you can then take off and use in jazz piano in particular but also in rock and pop and blues improvisations and in all kinds of other areas. So what I'm going to do today is take you through a bunch of drills and exercises that you can use to really boost your cocktail piano skills and they're going to come in three categories. First of all we're going to look at some broken chord exercises, then we're going to look at some chord jumping exercises and finally I'll take you through an exercise that will help you work across lots of different major keys. Okay. Now in particular these things are going to help you with moving around the keyboard confidently with your key and chord knowledge and also with landing securely on chords that have lots of black notes and that's a really important skill but one that is often overlooked. If you're new to cocktail piano, I've got loads of tutorials covering the basics and you'll find a playlist of those in the description text below this video on its YouTube watch page. I've even written an ebook about cocktail piano called An Introduction to Cocktail Piano. And if you have some basic piano skills and you can read just a bit of sheet music and you know a tiny bit about chords, An Introduction to Cocktail Piano will take you and show you how to become a competent cocktail piano player more or less from scratch. Yeah? So if you want to find out more about an introduction to um, a cocktail piano I'll include a link to it in the description text and also in one of those little YouTube cards that pops up in the top right hand corner of the screen if you like this tutorial I'm pretty sure that you will love the book okay on with the show let's get learning some really useful cocktail piano drills so first up we have the most underrated of all piano drills the broken chord exercise here's one based on a simple C major triad can you see how that works? I'm just working my way up and down different inversions of a C major chord. C, E, G, E, G, C, G, C, E. Then the pattern repeats for the next octave. C, E, G, E, G, C, G, C, E. And then back down again. And if you've ever had a piano lessons, you'll probably find chord exercises like this very familiar. They're useful because they really make you focus on individual finger control and at the same time they help you memorize lots of different chord shapes. So how can we use broken chord exercises to really sharpen up our cocktail playing? Well, there are a couple of ways. One of the distinctive things about cocktail piano is the way it uses large chunks of real estate on the piano keyboard. You're very often playing kind of decorations and runs stretching way up into the octaves above middle C. So having lots of different chord shapes instinctively under your fingers and having individual finger control that's good enough to play those quickly really helps. Broken chords are also fantastic for helping you to get your fingers around chords and patterns that contain lots of black notes. And that's handy because cocktail songs are often in keys like B flat or E flat or A flat major. So let's have a quick run through some of the broken chord exercises that you can use. We've already had a quick look at our simple C major example, but you can very quickly increase the challenge by using a chord that contains black notes. E flat is a good example. Here we go. Now I'm going to leave the precise fingering you use here up to you. 
Yeah, there are widely accepted official fingerings for these things that you can look up and use, but I think in an informal style like cocktail, it really helps to be able to find your own fingers for the sake of comfort, but also so that you can learn to vary the fingers that you use. Don't neglect your left hand either. I'm mainly going to focus on the right because that's where the fancy stuff happens, but it's important to work both. Quick tip for you, notice how I'm trying to avoid using my fifth finger on a black note. Instead, I'm going for the fourth when I'm playing that broken chord. Now, when I'm playing these things, I'm really, really focusing, and this is hard when I'm talking at the same time, but I'm really focusing on trying to keep them as smooth and as even as possible. And as far as I can, I'm giving each note something like a similar weight without, for example, coming down too hard on my thumb. You don't want a sound like that. Yeah, aim for, aim for a sound that is smooth and even. Now, doing that perfectly is all but impossible. So you've got a never-ending challenge on your hands with these things, making them as good as you can. Don't just play them, think, yeah, that's easy, I can do that, and then forget them. That's not how you get better. Really work on getting these things smooth and even and perfect. So what else can you do with broken chord exercises? Well, whatever you like, really. You can actually get quite inventive with these things. So for example, you could use a four note chord rather than a three note chord for working your way up and down the keyboard. Here's A flat major as a four note chord, okay? That's relatively easy. If you wanna up the challenge, you can get clever and try using chord shapes like A flat major seven. So the same principle is at work there. I'm just playing up the inversions, but the jumps are very different and it's a different kind of challenge. Let me just slow that one down so you can try it for yourself. A flat C, E flat G, C, E flat G, A flat, E flat G, A flat C, G, A flat C, E flat, and back to A flat C, E flat G, so on and so on up the keyboard, just going up the different inversions of the A flat major seven chord. Another one I really like is to pick a key like E flat major. So there's the scale of E flat major with its three flats, E flat, A flat, and B flat, and then play broken chords on every other seventh chord going up two octaves, which will cover all of the diatonic sevenths in that key if you're familiar with that terminology. And if you're not, don't worry, because it is covered in the tutorials that I've got in the playlist below. So in E flat major, that will go E flat major seven, G minor seven, B flat seven, D half diminished seventh, or D minor seven flat five, which is the label I prefer, whatever you want to call it though. F minor seven, A flat major seven, C minor seven, back up to E flat major seven, and then back down again. Okay, it's more complex, your fingers are moving in different ways, and it gets your thinking, which is really important. Let's try it in C so it's a bit clearer. Remember, what we're doing is thinking about two octaves of the scale and rooting a seventh chord on every other note. If you want to think about it in terms of intervals, we're going up a third each time. So that gives us C major seven, E minor seven, G seven, B half diminished seventh or B minor seven flat five, whatever terminology you prefer, D minor seven, F major seven, A minor seven, and back to C major seven. And then back down the scale. Okay, having bent your brain, you can then bend your fingers by playing four arpeggio runs up the keyboard like this, with big stretches. Now, a really good thing to do is to notice which chord shapes are easy to do that with and which are hard. So this shape, for example, A minor seven flat five, is pretty straightforward. Bit of a big stretch under there, but it's doable. But if you take this shape, it's an A flat major seven shape in root position, it's only one note different, but it's more or less impossible because you get to the G and then there's no way you're gonna get that thumb onto that A flat. So even though those chords are a single note apart, they're very different when it comes to arpeggiating them. That's not to say that you can't play a, an arpeggio on a, an A flat major seven chord, you would just use a different inversion. You'd use that inversion of the chord, the first inversion, or you could probably do it with others as well. And um, you can even try really fast 
fast runs up the keyboard and these look really flashy and impressive but I'm going to show you a trick that makes them easy. Okay, what I'm doing there is playing a broken chord, but I'm playing it two or three times in each octave and then play it. So getting comfortable, getting stable, then thumb under, and then like that, and like that. And it'll gonna be it's gonna be a little bit splashy, you're gonna hit wrong notes, but because you've got the pedal down and because they're high notes and because they're really fast, people won't notice. Okay, really flashy and impressive. That obviously gets harder once you bring black notes into the equation, so you would struggle to do that with an E flat major seven chord. Oh, let's have a go. Yeah, more or less, but it's splashier than more mistakes here. A way around that, a little bit of a trick here, is to extend the chord upwards. So you've got your E flat root note in the left hand, and in the right, there's your major seventh chord. You extend it up to a major ninth. Now you've got this shape to play with, which is much, much easier. Okay, on to the next category of drill, and I've gone through these before in a previous cocktail piano tutorial, but they're so cool, I want to drop them in here too. They are chord jumps. Now, being able to jump chords up the keyboard is a really effective fill-in technique in cocktail piano. Um, it like, kind of like, has the same effect as arpeggio runs, but it's easier, yeah? And there are four basic types of exercise you can have a go at here. The first type, straightforward jumps on straightforward chords, just what I'm doing here. Just practice it, practicing running a simple chord up the piano keyboard okay it's a really good way of learning new chord shapes actually try to do it by feel if you can try not to look all the time and try always to keep things even and controlled something you can do is do it loudly but then softly or you can try arpeggiating them, spreading the chords out again that's a very common thing in cocktail piano yeah okay pretty straightforward but worth doing and again think about your control second type straightforward jumps but on more awkward chords like a flat major seven yeah now watch your thumb here because you don't want to slip off but as far as you can do it without looking too much at the keyboard really get a feel for the chords do the same sorts of things arpeggiate them a little bit every now and then okay Third type is jumps in inversions on straightforward chords. So we're back to our F major 7 chord, for example, or you could use C major 7. But this time what we're going to do is use a different inversion of the chord, a different shape of the same chord for each jump. So something like this. Can you see what I'm doing? They're all F major 7 chords, but they are different shapes of the chord. And it makes you think a little bit more about where you're putting your fingers. And then the fourth type, you've got it, jumps and inversions, but on slightly less secure chords, like A flat major seven, so something like this. You don't have to play every single inversion going up, just find a few, but again, we're aiming for security, okay, especially around those awkward black notes. Our third and final category has just one exercise in it, and it's designed to get you working more comfortably in different keys, which lots of you have been asking for help with. Basically, all we're going to do is play through a simple chord progression, and you can play these chords in any voicings or inversions you want, it doesn't matter, okay? And it's a progression you might well know if you've watched any of my cocktail tutorials in the past, because it's probably one of the most common chord progressions there is. We're going to go C major 7. A minor 7, F major 7, G7, and it loops really naturally back to the beginning. C major 7, A minor 7, F major 7, G7, and so on and so forth. Okay, we're just going to keep going round and round that progression. And all you do for this exercise is play that progression using, as I said, any chord voicings, any inversions you like, but then you transpose it to a different major key you choose at random. So in other words, you take the same pattern of chords and play it instead in something like B flat major. B flat major 7, G minor 7, E flat major 7, F7. Okay, can you hear how the chords are the same, the relationships between the chords are the same, but the key has changed. Let's go to E major. That gives us E major 7, C sharp minor 7, a major 7, 
B7, okay? And we can go round and round all 12 major keys. And this exercise is good for you because it familiarizes you not just with lots of different chord shapes, but also it gives you a sense of how lots of different major keys and their chords feel under your fingers. And it forces you to think and to use your ears, really important, to check that you're right. So how do you find that progression in any key? Well, there are two ways and both of them are good for you. The first one is simple trial and error, which just means using your ears to say, okay, in C major, it sounds like this. Okay, so let's try an A flat major. Ooh, that's gonna be something like A flat major seven and then F minor seven and D flat major seven and then E flat seven. And you won't do it as quickly as that, you'll make more mistakes than I, I did. But that basic idea of listening to see if you're getting it right and to compare it to something that you already know is a fantastic exercise for you. It might feel really clumsy, but it is really, really good for you. Now, the other way of doing it is if you know your scales, and this is yet another reason to know your scales, the other way of doing it is to work it out theoretically. So here's our scale of C major, and what I can do, as you may know, is build diatonic chords off that scale, the chords that are naturally occurring in the, in the key of C major. I can do that just by running a simple triad shape of the scale using the notes of the scale to build chords. Okay, now what I can then do is look at my chord progression and take the basic underlying chords, C a minor, F and G, and say, okay, those are the chords built off the first, sixth, fourth, and fifth notes of the scale of that key. I might call them the one, six, four, and five chords. So if then I know the scale of, for example, A major, okay, I can then say, okay, so what are the one, six, four, and five chords of A major? Hold on, they are A, F sharp minor, D and E. Then I can add the sevenths and that gives me A major seven, F sharp minor seven, D major seven, and E7. It's kind of tricky at first, it's kind of mental hard work, but again, it's incredibly good for you. Okay, there we are, that's it for another tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed that. I'm just gonna give you another quick plug for an introduction to Cocktail Piano, my ebook. It's been out quite a while now, but lots of people really, really like it. So if you've been into this kind of thing, if you like the cocktail sound, if you wanna know about decoration and improvisation and creating cocktail chords, it is all in that ebook, okay? Lots of people have really liked it, I'm sure you will too. There's a, a, a link to it in the description text underneath this tutorial and also in the YouTube card that you'll see in the top right hand corner of the screen. On the subject of my books you might also like how to really play the piano so if you just get into grips with kind of understanding chords and harmony and improvisation all of that kind of stuff that isn't covered in traditional piano lessons then this book will help you. It's more than 10 years old now. It's really popular. It's available as a print and an ebook edition. Go and look at the Amazon reviews. People do really like this book so check that one out if you're just getting started with this stuff. Um, if you're into um, pop music, pop piano, ballad piano then you will also also probably like Seven Studies in Pop Piano, which is seven pieces of in a pop piano style with full explanation and coverage of the techniques you can use to start improvising in that style and so on and so forth. Again, really popular and this one is available as a print and, and as an ebook as well. So there we go. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit the red button in the bottom right hand corner there if you haven't and click the bell icon so you get full updates of every new video I put out. Follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, links are all below. Please consider supporting me on Patreon, patreon.com slash Bill Hilton, the crowdfunding site. That's really worth checking out, really helps um, if you want to support me on there. And yeah, that's kind of it. As you know, I always like to hear from people. So if you have any comments or questions, just stick them in the comment thread right underneath this video. And I will be really delighted to help you out if I can. Okay, there we go. Happy cocktail piano playing. I'll see you again very soon.